Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and this is going to be an exciting one. KDE has released Plasma 6, and oh boy is there a lot of changes. This was announced in, of course, all of their stuff and our newsletter, and there's truly a lot to cover. Personally, I just installed this this morning. I've been kind of tinkering and playing around with it for the last couple hours, and this is my very first attempt at recording on it as well. So I'm actively using the environment to make this video right now. And at least for this video, I will do my post-production work in this environment as well. Now, first things first, we have some big under the hood changes, things that you probably won't really notice just right out of the gate. And that is the QT6 and Wayland are now default. If I go over here to the QT group announcement page, this is their specific announcement on the Plasma 6 release. Uh, using QT6 for everything on the system. This is kind of the, uh, it's the equivalent of GTK on the GNOME environment. This is the backbone for a lot of the stuff that we're going to be experiencing. There are a heap of improvements, performance optimizations, and modern features that really make this a, an awesome system to develop on. And then of course we have a Wayland being the default there. There's been a very slow process since uh, the very first time even Ubuntu tried to make Wayland the default, but now we are absolutely seeing it everywhere. And there are just a ton of different performance improvements with this uh, display protocol, improved security performance, native support for modern hardware, and just overall Wayland does give an enhanced user experience, especially compared to using it a couple years ago, where in most cases, if you try to do many things, whether that be try to record your desktop screen, play certain games, it just it was not a good time. And now based on my limited testing, at least on this environment, it's been very well, and it's been the default on GNOME for a little while. Now, before we get into some of these other changes, some more visual kind of user front-facing stuff, I do need to thank the sponsor of today's video. And that is PCBWay, a full feature custom PCB prototyping service. And not only that, they have a bunch of other services such as CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and a whole lot more. And actually using the service is pretty simple. You see on their homepage here the process for either your prototypes, assembly, really whatever you need. It's really as simple as just uploading the PCB file, getting an order review, paying, and you're good to go. And this right here is the order page, so you can see really how detailed you could get with the PCBs you order. From the specific size, to the amount of layers, the actual material you want to use, various colors, and oh, a whole lot more. If you have an idea, a project, they can make a prototype for you, and really just allow your ideas to come to life. And of course, if you're interested in trying out this service or using any of the services they provide, make sure you check out the link down below. And with that, here we are on our desktop. We're in settings now. I kind of browsed through everything, but I left everything at the default at the moment. One thing I would like to do real quick is make this a little bit easier for you guys to see. So if I go over here to display and monitor, we have our scale. So if I just bump this up a little bit here, let's click apply. There we go. And you can see how easy quick that was to do fractional scaling. It even scaled up the bar on the bottom here without us having to do any custom settings and whatnot. Which, speaking of, the customization for everything kind of has changed for the better. If I go down here, right-click, and I'm going to enter Edit Mode. Instead of having a ruler and just a lot of things that didn't make much sense, they've made this way easier to customize. The rulers are gone. There's just these simple buttons that allow you to change the position, alignment, width, style, opacity, and visibility. And you can see the default is kind of this like floating taskbar, which is my personal preference, but if I were to disable that, it would just drop it back down on the bottom. The default opacity is adaptive. We have some visibility options. So right now it's set to always visible, but we do have auto hide now and dodge windows. So if I enable the dodge windows, for example, and before I show that off, I am going to customize the width to fit content. I think that looks really good. And of course you could always have a custom width and then you can edit this kind of in the traditional sense or the previous way that we expected to. But if I go ahead and let's get out of edit mode, so we go up here, close this out. Now this panel here will dodge windows. So if you open up something like Kate, for example, you can see that it will get out of the way of the windows and pop back up. Just really nice, cool, clean features. And another new thing is the fancy looking overview. So if we get our cursor here and throw it into the top corner, very similar to how GNOME works or GNOME, we have our windows here. Granted, on my OBS is looking a little weird here. Let's throw that to a new desktop. But we have our windows here. We have search. We have all of our various virtual desktops. Again, ignore this. 
Or, I mean, ooh, don't necessarily ignore it. This is the first time noticing something like this. If I minimize it and launch it, nope. <laughs> Let's refresh the UI here. There we go. That's one of the reasons why I like doing these kind of videos live is we discover some things on the way. This is probably a little Wayland issue. This is a flat pack. There's a variety of things that could be going on, but it says it's still recording. It looks good, so I think we're okay. But with that, throw the cursor up there. Go back to this desktop. Overall, this looks really good. We can see here some more information on our actual uh, newsletter here. This was a feature that was developed by Nico, which it merges the overview of a single desktop with all the desktops together in the same effect and it moves around the desktop with one-to-one -one animations. Has a real nice blurred background, as you saw. It, ju it just looks really good. And of course, you will have some customization options. So if I go and search up overview, which this would be under desktop effects, overview, you can then go to configure and customize this to your heart's consent or content. <laughs> then we have the initial HDR support and for a lot of people, this is a huge deal. This isn't an HDR monitor, so I can't really take too much benefit from that at the moment. So there will be an option to toggle HDR in external monitors that support it. You play HDR games and other use cases are also supported, such as playing video, but that may still require some command line tinkering. That's the panel thing. We just covered that. That's personally one of my favorite things. And then we have a Breeze redesign. Um, if you don't look too hard, it looks very similar. It's not like... A, the latest uh, Nautilus update where there are some super obvious changes in kind of the appearance and layout of things. But overall, Breeze it just does look a little bit better. And we can see a little description here. We no longer have the all views contained in the blue frame, but rather they always extend to the window border or be separated with other elements by a single pixel line. And this builds on a ton of other improvements. And you will kind of see this throughout if I go home here. The coloring is just a little bit different. And this is really related directly to the Breeze theme. But going through this, you'll notice that a lot of things just seem less cluttered and messy. Personally, at least until I've been checking this out, I've been a definite uh, proponent and kind of my preference has been always leaning towards GNOME. To me, it's just a lot more polished, clean, easy to use. Granted, it's not nearly as customizable as KDE Plasma. But we can see here in some of these latest improvements that everything is just getting a lot better. It looks cleaner and everything's just so much more easy to navigate. The animations are a little bit better. Granted, it's still cluttered and kind of overwhelming with the amount of customization options you have. That's really not a huge thing worth complaining about. The cube is back, which th this is the cube. Uh, there's no actual good use case for the cube other than to uh, impress people who've never seen it before. And to be frank, it was the initial kind of a wobbly windows and <laughs> closing out the windows and having them kind of burn off is what initially got me interested in Linux, probably when I was like a sixth grader or something like that. But it's cool that you could do it. And this is what I was kind of talking about with the settings, just everything being less cluttered and all over the place. They did a complete reorganization of the system settings here. And this particular example, so if we go over here, Let's go down to colors and themes. And uh, we have the light mode. Let's let's jump into dark here. So apply. There we go. Ooh, it changed the background too. Nice. But like if I go to system sounds here, you can see how it's all separated out now. It, it just looks nice. And yeah, this is one of the newer settings pages you see here. After all, we're KDE. We can't release a major version without a new setting page. Which this right here is actually a new settings page that we're looking at. I believe there's another one here if I reference this. A setting page that allows you to change the wallpaper, which is right here. Wallpaper. And we have a lot of the old KDE stuff. And then, of course, you could add your own wallpaper packs or whatever here. Get new link to the KDE store, which is always a fun thing to go ahead and explore, but I'm not going to at the moment. New Plasma mobile home screen. I'm, I'm probably not going to cover this right now. That is a whole video in the in itself to be able to cover uh, Plasma Mobile. And there have been some improvements to Caden Live, which I'm looking forward to checking out. Honestly, I have not used Caden Live in quite a while. I have been using DaVinci Resolve for just about everything. And I've been using that on a MacBook. So kind of tells you where I'm at with video editing on Linux, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. If you are interested, I do recommend you check out their KDE Mega Release 6. This will go into more detail than I was able to cover, including 
the new colors and the high dynamic range, the wallpapers that they added, which it looks very good. It's it's one of those ones that I'm probably going to keep around. You know, a uh, desktop environment operating system, whatever, did a really good job picking when you don't feel the need to change it right away. And trust me, there have been situations where you feel the need to change it. Oh yeah, new defaults. This is something that a lot of people are getting kind of butthurt over, which I think is silly. Uh, so if I open this up, if I click on pictures, it doesn't open right away. Uh, you have to click on it twice. How horrible. That's obviously different from what it was. It was a single click to open things. This is just a new default and a new install. It's not going to change your previous settings. And if you don't like it and you do a new install, everything's customizable and configurable. And you can see a lot of these here. Files and folders are now single click. Touchpad is a single tap to click. Wayland is default. Thumbnail grid is the new default with the switcher. Clicking on scroll bar now scrolls to click for location. That was something that like I kind of noticed previously, but it wasn't a big deal. But now actually um, being able to actually go like this is very nice. And then we have scrolling on the desktop no longer switches and panels float by default. And then there's really a whole lot more. I will be linking to this down below, which goes into more details about things I didn't cover, such as Plasma Search and even more specific things and whatnot. I'll link to both my newsletter that Nicolo wrote, this KDE announcement, and the actual like kind of text change log of everything. Now for me personally, I'm really liking it. And I installed this on my main kind of workstation environment. I will be keeping this as my main thing for a little bit. And if it's worth reporting back, I will report to you guys on how my experience is going. Honestly, I had windows on this machine for probably about a month as I was finishing up my last little bit of projects for school, but it is definitely refreshing not to have that on here anymore. With all that, do make sure you subscribe. Check out our sponsor, PCB Way. They have always been awesome in helping support the channel. And thank you to you guys for supporting us, whether that be just watching the video, becoming a member on techhut.tv, or a member directly here on YouTube. Big thank you to all, uh, and have a beautiful day.